it's hard to predict what the future you know will, has in store for us. I mean, you know, in 1999, I would have thought film would have been gone by now. But people react. You know, I, you know, I, you know, being an, an older person, I think well, young people are not going to have any exposure to this, um, and are not going to care, and they're going to just be spoon fed and you know buy what what is on the shelf. Uh, but then I get quite surprised because you know. Um, Many young people are interested in film. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Berliner. I'm the executive director of the Penumbra Foundation in New York City. Um, we are a photographic arts and education organization devoted primarily uh, to historic and alternative photographic processes. You know, photography is, is a practice of, um, it's an art form of endless invention and endless um, adaptation. And I think that's what I like about it, is that it's endless. You can find different ways of expressing yourself, and everybody has a different, unique way of seeing. The Panama Foundation mission is to maintain the relevance of historical photographic processes, um, and is committed to the art and science of photography. Uh, so we basically want to <clears throat> be able to teach uh, early photographic processes, we want to do history of photography, we want to do research, all relating to analog photography. Um, use it as a teaching tool, um, use it um, to, uh, as a way for artists to find processes and mediums um, for their own personal vision and expression. Um, for conservation is another reason uh, we do it. Um, also to teach photography. Everybody who's doing digital photography now um, are using technologies that in many respects in their minds don't need analog photography, but once they learn and understand what came before, it enriches their ability to make photographs because they understand what photography is. So there are many people who have come here, they've seen tintype filters on Instagram. And they say, well, what's a tintype? And then they find out about us, and they find that, that actually a tintype is a handmade photographic process. Um, and that they can learn to do it, learn to make a real tintype. So they actually are exposed to the tintype through a fake tintype, which they saw. You know, I think people are always finding for a unique individual expression of some sort. You know, and I think it's like in tattoos, for instance, you know. Um, there's a sense of alternative, there's a sense of I'm different. People want to express themselves, they want to find their own expression, even though then everybody jumps on the bandwagon, well then how expressive is it? But I think, you know, um, people want individuality, they want uniqueness. And I think what digital photography is the sameness. So the technology is going in one direction, and then what will happen is the, technolo the technology of the companies will react to what the market might be doing, and artists or people who are wanting to use it for different things, so they'll come up with the bokeh on the iPhone 7, or uh, they'll come up with filters, or they'll come up with um, lenses like the Lomography Petzl lens. They'll go back, uh, because they find that people are trying to find their own expression, they're finding a way to express themselves, and they want to get away from the sameness. People like a thing. They like something they can hold, they like something they can share, they like something they're going to find, they're going to have, they're going to rediscover, they're going to look at, they can hold it. A digital file is a, it's a you know, photography is abstract in itself, but, even, but a digital file takes abstraction to a different level. It's living somewhere in a cloud on your computer. It could disappear. It's backlit to look at it. You can print it, and some people do, and, and it's nice to, to have an inkjet print. Most people don't. It lives on their phone, on their computer, on their iPad. Um, it lives somewhere which can be lost, it can be hacked into. Um, and it, 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 it sort of, there's a disconnect between, there's a, there's a human disconnect between having a thing. Humans are very tactile, they like touching things, making things, smelling things, feeling things. I can't tell you how many people I bring into the dark room who hadn't been in the dark room in a long time. Oh, I, I miss that smell. The smell ignites something. They miss the smell of the chemical. Or they miss that contemplative experience of being in, this, in, a, in a place where they're smelling and feeling uh, uh, and having a human experience. Digital, I think, disconnects the, those human senses and experiences. A photograph is a sensory experience. You hold it in your hand, you look at it. It fades, it gets damaged, it, 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 and, and the damage sometimes adds to it. Um, you can share it, you can show it to somebody, you can put it on the wall, um, you can lose it in a drawer. I like the idea of, of, I have you know thousands of photographs, and I love not seeing them in a long time and rediscovering them and finding them and pulling them out of a drawer. Um, I guess you can do that with a digital file, but I have computers that date back to the 1980s, which I can't access them anymore. Some of them are on floppy disks, some of them are on uh, computers that I can't even look at anymore. I can't even download them, they get lost. And a photograph is there. It's in a drawer. You can 
file it, you can put it in a file, you can find it. You know, the Earth will end, electricity will be gone, and aliens will come from another planet, and those photographs will be there for them to look at. <laughs> but the computers will all be dead. 